In this video, we're going to show you how we use robotic motion to create this product video. and company we're looking at this video are Wana Gummies. Now these are an edible that we thought we could do something special with in terms of camera movement as well as set design. In terms of set, we wanted something very clean and simple that would just highlight the product and what it's about. We added lots of fruit and color to the scene. The first thing I'm gonna go over is lighting. Now when you're shooting products like this to get an even and flat look, a lot of lighting is needed. As you can see, there are not a lot of shadows being casted and everything is well lit well around. To do this, we used a six by four scrim gym hoisted right above the product. And on that scrim, we had a half diffusion as well as a full stop of diffusion. Shooting through that scrim was a Forza 500 at roughly 75% and mounted on that was a rectangular softbox so we could stop the spill going into the roof and we can, can kind of control where the light is going. Now the scrim was just to set room tone as well as get a bunch of light spilling on the backdrop as well as the subject. To light the subject mainly, we used the Aperture 120D with a small beauty dish and this was boomed over the project roughly sitting at 70% intensity. The next thing was to light the front of the product and that we used a Titan tube at 20% now where the product is sitting there's also this piece of seamless paper and we wanted to make sure that was extended fully and the way we did that is we actually taped it to the Titan tube that was lighting the front of the product. If we drape the piece of seamless paper over the actual table that would cause a harsh reflection or even a line if you ended up creasing it. Now the last thing was to get an even spread on the backdrop and to do that we used six Titan tubes. Whenever we're shooting something like this or we just require our backdrops to have an even lighting across the whole thing, we use false color and scopes. To do that with false color, you just make sure that everything is the same color across the board. And to do this in scopes, you just look across the whole thing and make sure it's relatively a straight line. Next thing we're gonna look at is camera and camera support. The camera we were using was a Sony FX6, shooting on a Sigma 35mm prime lens. Small projects like this, this camera is perfect, but any other camera with this proper lighting would do as well. In terms of camera support, we use a Rhino R2 slider. Now, this gives us three axes of control. This gives us the sliding motion, the rotating, as well as the tilt. So that is three axes. Now we consider two movements for this. We could either do a dolly in or a dolly from right to left, as well as the camera rotating and tilting down to give three axes of motion. We thought the second option would be the best because we have all three axes in motion. The Rhino R2 provides repeatable robotic motion. A product video like this is only achievable with a system like this. Now this is a very entry level to robotic motion. Actually, your first robotic motion would be a simple slider that you could program back and forth. This is a little more advanced than that, and then you can go to the end of the spectrum where you have a full-on robotic control, which they use in cinema production. So what we did is we set the position of the first frame with the controllable joystick and user interface, and then set the position of our end frame. And then from there, the Rhino R2 plans the path between those two frames within a given time interval. We knew we wanted this video for social, so it was gonna be around 15 seconds. So the 12 second time interval was chosen from 0.1 to 0.2, and then we have three seconds to roll the logo and outro. Now with the camera package and movement out of the way, and the next thing to talk about is set design and product placement. To set this up, we just used a simple cutting board and then we had six flavors that we wanted to kind of change between with the stop motion kind of look. So we knew that we had to create some sort of rectangle in the middle. And around that, we just added a bunch of fruits. Now we just got a bunch of products and fruits that related to the flavors of the product. We had blueberries, strawberries, strawberry lemonade, pomegranate, and just a bunch of other flavors that you can see there. Now again, we are not set designers. This is something that we just kind of created up on the spot. We didn't really have a plan for this. So we just placed a bunch of colors in different places, tried a bunch of different things to see what looked best. Now the only thing that we had to be careful is that we had separation between the product and the fruit. We didn't want to have the product being lost in the fruit, so we had a fine line between them. To prop all these fruits up, we just used skewers, and to actually give them a more natural look, we sprayed a bunch of water on them before actually shooting everything. Now the last thing that we're going to be talking about is the camera movement and editing this all together. As I said, we set the first keyframe point and our end keyframe point with the Rhino R2, and then we just hit play. Now with that first frame being established, 
We carefully reset the slider and then I moved all the gummies in a counterclockwise rotation, making sure without touching anything else. This can be very tedious, but we just had to do this six times. The most tedious thing about this project anyways was dialing the lighting setup and then also getting our set design as well. Now going into the editing side, it's pretty difficult to actually sync up these clips together. The only way that we actually sync these clips together is the clicking of the thumbstick. Starting. With this slider, it's easy to do this robotic motion with multiple clips. What would be best is to have a camera trigger that triggers the same time as soon as the slider starts. I don't necessarily know that this is a function for video, but I know it does have a function for time lapses. We're pretty happy with the results using the Rhino Arc 2 for the first time and doing this style of product shoot where everything has to be dialed in perfectly. If you're interested in the Arc 2 or any Rhino products that you're looking at, please use the link in the bio below. We get a small kickback, but is at no additional cost to you. If you like the video, please let us know in the comments below too. We love hearing your feedback as well as any other things that we should try. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.